We're going to talk about box and whisker plots. That's why I put this one. I really need to see that data. <laughs> of course, it's a cat would do that. So these are actually really easy. You just have to get all the numbers in the list and get this five number summary. So I'll show you how to do that again in case you forgot. So from the minimum, the Q1, that's the first quartile, maybe the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. So let me just show you what a box and whisker plot might look like. So let me just uh, try to draw it here. It won't be perfect, but let me just attempt to. So I'll go, I don't know, maybe something like, uh, well, I need to draw a box first. I guess I'll draw that. Oops, I'm just really bad at drawing a straight line, aren't I? Like this, maybe like this. This is supposed to be a box here, like that. And maybe it's not symmetric, so maybe, whoa, maybe it's something like this. I've got some little things in here that stick out like this right here, maybe like that. And maybe we have something like a little X here just to show you some of the different things we might have. So this right here is a box and whisker plot. So this right here, I mean, you'll have some kind of X values. This will mean something. So maybe it's like, uh, I don't know, sizes or number of students or scores or whatever. There's some sort of thing we're measuring here. Now what this right here is going to be, this is your minimum value here. This is your minimum value. This right here is your um, Q1, so your first quartile. This one right here is your median. This one right here is your Q3. This right here is your maximum value. What's this little X thing right here? That's an outlier. So this right here, we would draw them as X's. We call them outliers. Um, so these are your pro tips then for you, right? So this one right here, first one. Outliers are crosses. Yep. So what do I mean by this? Remember what outliers are. Outliers are valid, uh, you know, greater than, you know, right, I guess just to remind you, greater than, uh, how does it go again, 1.5 times IQR from Q1 or Q3. So I have another video showing you that, right? So this is our good old friend, the outliers. That's what those are. So those are crosses. We've got the range. Well, the range is the maximum minus the minimum. So that'll be the, the range. So if someone asks you, hey, what's the range of this thing? Then you know what they're talking about. Now, symmetry is important because this one here is not symmetric, for example. And by the way, you can see that this right here is the box, I suppose you could say. Right, that's the box. And here's, I guess, the whiskers. Right, here's a whisker here, and also here's a whisker there. Right, so those are the whiskers. That's why it's a box and whisker plot. Um, Symmetry, however, so this is actually kind of neat. What if you have an example of a box and whisker plot where it's completely symmetric? So what if you have, I don't know, something goes like this maybe, like that, with this right in the middle, it goes right like this and right like this. This is if it's symmetric. So note, remember this one right here is the median. Well, if the median, if it's all symmetric like this, the median will actually be equal to the mean. It'll actually be equal to the average. That'll be kind of neat. In fact, if it's symmetric like this, we can actually say it's normally distributed. So that'll be kind of a neat thing we can say at least. If it's symmetric, it's probably normally distributed. So that's that's one neat little conclusion we can make from these box and whisker plots. So how do we go about doing these in practice? It's surprisingly easy. All you have to do is do the usual. Get the numbers on the list and get the five number summary. So in case you've forgotten, here's how you do it. You put all into your calculator, depending on if you have the Inspire or the 84. You put the stuff into a list, you name your columns. Or this one here, you go stat, edit, and put it in L1. If you have frequencies, they're L2. Then you do the stats analysis. So in the TI Inspire, you press menu and go stats and do one variable statistics. Don't forget to use a frequency column if you needed to, at least for that one. Same for the 84. You go stat, you go right to calc, and you do one var stats. Again, use the frequency if you need to. And then TI Inspire can actually do it, and I think the uh, TI 84 can do it as well. You can actually draw the box and whisker plot if you want to. I don't think it's that important to draw it on your calculator. You have to be able to draw it by hand. But, you know, let's see. Let's do an example then. I like this near forget math. This is a box and whisker plot. Ah. So I'm counting the number of students in a bunch of different classes. Uh, these would be huge numbers of classes of students in classes. Uh, that would be huge. But uh, maybe in your school you have so many. Um, so this is number of students in a class, and this is the number of different times that happens. So there's one class with 33 kids in it. There's five of them with 34. This must be a giant school. But uh, draw a box and whisker plot for the data. 
Well, I got to put all this information into my calculator. So first, I'm going to go to lists and I'm going to make a spreadsheet for these. So maybe I'll say students, maybe that'll be the good thing to write here. So S T U D E N T S students. And the next one I think I'll call it uh, frequency. I think that'll be a good one to do. So I'll call it frequency. So maybe I'll say F R E Q maybe freak for frequency maybe. That'd be a good one. And then I'll go ahead and put them all in. So I'll say, all right, so 33, and I'll say 34, and I'll just keep going like this, 35, 36. Boring to watch, I know. Whoops. Especially when I make mistakes, huh? 34, 35, 36. Uh, geez, I don't know what's going on here. 37, I was trying to go faster, but it's actually going slower like this. Oh well, sorry. Uh, 39 and 40. There we go, and I go up and I just put in my data here for my frequency. So it's one, and five, and seven. This is the boring part, right? 13, but hopefully it's easy. You're just putting in the data in the list. Uh, 12, eight, zero, there's none with 39, and then there's one with 40. There we go. So what do I do now? I go to menu, at least for mine, I go to stats, and I say, give me a calculation. I want one variable statistics, even though there's two columns, it's still one variable, the other one's just frequency. So I say one, and I say, yes, there's only one list. And I go over here, and I say, give me uh, students for the X, and for the frequency, give me, I move my right arrow here, and I say, give me the frequency. That's the one, and I say, go, do it. Now I gave you my five number summary. So maybe it helps to just write this all down. So I'm gonna write this down. So I'm gonna say, so the min equals 33. Maybe I'll write them all down here. So min equals 33. The, uh, let's see, what else did I have? The Q1 was 35, medium, median is 36, Q3 is 37. So it goes 35, 36, 37. Median 36, Q3 is 37, max, well, it should be 40. Just to make sure, right? You don't have to be so silly about it. We can also think about it critically and make sure it's 40. Let's see if it is, it should be. And just scroll down a little bit, there you go. And then, um, what else might I want to know? Maybe I want to know the standard deviation. I might want to know the mean. The mean is 36.3, let's just say. Approximately. So, what can we need? Um, ooh, actually we've already answered this one. What's the average number of students? That is the mean. So the mean is equal to, see, 36.3. So sometimes we're not just asked for the box and whisker plot, we could be asked for other things. So I'm just trying to show you the there's some easy things you can get just from the five number summary. You can also get extra numbers like the mean and the standard deviation and stuff. Interquartile range, we know how to do that. We have an equation for it. IQR equals the third quartile minus the first quartile. And we know those numbers. Look, the third quartile is 37. The first quartile is 35. Therefore, the IQR equals a grand total of two. There we go. That was kind of easy. Can we have the median number of students? Yep, I know that number is 36. So that's kind of nice, actually. So do you see we've actually done most of it just from that five number summary, or at least, uh, shouldn't just be called a five number summary because I guess we've technically looked at the mean as well, but you get the idea. All right, so let's try to draw this box and whisker plot. Let's try to do that one. So I can go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll give myself a little line like this, zoop, like that. Maybe I'll just start labeling values here. So what's the smallest? 33, so I'll go fine. I'll go uh, 33, and I'll just go 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. I've just at least tried to draw it evenly. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. 38, 37, 36, 35, and 34. Because now I know what my boxes and whiskers and stuff are going to do. My box is going to be Q1, median, and Q3. So let's see now. Where is the Q1? 
51 is at 35, so I'm going to draw that first piece of the box there. Then it's going to go to 36, right here, and 37, right here. So this is my box, right, because that's Q1. This is Q3. This right here is the median. All right, then if I do this one right here, I look at also the uh, maximum, which was 40. So this one goes all the way out, wee, like this, all the way out to 40. Whoops, I wasn't a very good straight line, but you get the idea, I hope. I'm trying to make it a better straight line. Let's see if it's any better, if it's worse. I'm still really bad at drawing straight lines. And then this one right here uh, goes all the way down to 33, so like this. So it's not quite symmetric because of the max and min, but the box part at least is pretty symmetric. Um, you could test for outliers, uh, but this is, I think, the case. Now, you might want to ask a, a qualitative question. Um, is this normally distributed? And you can say, ah, pretty close. It's pretty symmetric. In fact, look, the median is very close to the mean. Do you notice that? So that's actually, it's, it's pretty much, it's very close to a normal distribution.